Hello everybody, let's consider the similarities and differences between origin of uh, female versus male uh, gametes. So let's compare the orogenesis with the spermiogenesis. First, the origin and maturation of all sites. It starts with the uh, cells called primordial ogonia. That are cells with 44 plus T, so 46 altogether chromosomes. So, diploid cells with this nuclear content. They multiply via mitosis that repeats many times to produce cells called primary oocytes. This occurs in the cortex of ovary of a female fetus, approximately in the fifth month of prenatal development, where the number of primary oocytes reaches five to six millions. Uh, now, these have the same nuclear content, but their further development is arrested. They are entering the first meiotic division but they are arrested and once they finish the first meiotic division they become secondary all sides. This arrest may take years or decades. So we'll get, as the outcome of the first meiotic division, we got a secondary oocyte with a haploid number of chromosomes, so 23 chromosomes, but each chromosome has still two chromatids. This first meiosis is asymmetrical, so the other cell takes only a little cytoplasm and it's called first polar body. And the secondary oocytes also enters the second meiotic division But again, it's arrested there and only uh, all sites that are fertilized will complete that second medic division, thus becoming mature oocytes. The other cell resulting from second meiotic division is a is a second polar body, a very small cell. By the way, the first polar body should also divide in the second meiosis, but mo mo but sometimes it does not, and it's not important. Now the mature oocyte has twenty-two plus one chromosome, so 23. It's haploid, but it is half the nuclear content compared to secondary oocyte because there was no duplication of chromatids in between. Let's compare it with a spermiogenesis. It starts with primordial spermatogonia
and similarly they are entering repeated mitotic divisions becoming primary spermatocytes by the way these cells have are uh, self re it's a self-renewing population of stem cells actually but those that differentiate differentiate into primary spermatocytes that again uh, similarly to the primary oocyte oocytes have 46 chromosomes but this time it's XY because it's spermiogenesis. Primary spermatocytes are entering the first meiotic division the outcome of which is a pair of secondary spermatocytes that are connected with a thin cytoplasmic link One of these will inherit 23 chromosomes, including X gonosome. Another one will inherit 23 chromosomes, but one of these will be the Y chromosome. They are entering the second meiotic division, each of these cells. The outcome of which of four cells called spermatids. At the beginning they are still connected via cytoplasmic links into kind of a chain of cells. Now two of these have the X chromosome and two have the Y chromosome. So these cells are called spermatids. But these are not mature sperm cells. They need to enter a process called spermiohistogenesis. So it starts with uh, spermatid. Each of these spermatid with the nucleus with uh, regular organelles. I will mention the Golgi complex above all and I will mention the centriole here. So this is a spermatid with nucleus Golgi complex and the centriole Now the Golgi complex and the uh, its vesicles, a whole system of vesicles, is migrating towards the apical pole. The centriole is on the opposite pole, organizing the differentiation of flagellum. The nucleus, the chromatin in the nucleus, the nuclear content, is undergoing a dramatical uh, spiralization and condensation and in the next step most of the cytoplasm is lost it as a so-called residual body So after losing most of the cytoplasm, there is already the, the morphology of a sperm cell with a head, with the middle piece, and with the tail, which is the longest part. In the head, you'll find extremely densely condensated 
chromatin or even the 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 uh, chromatin uh, proteins like histones were replaced by by other called protamins to make the chromatin even more condensed the head is occupied by an organelle called acrosome which contains um, hydrolytic enzymes that will be important for uh, penetrating the the uh, layers surrounding the oocyte during the fertilization the nucleus has a pycnotic or highly condensed chromatin there is a middle piece here with mitochondria and there is a flagellum so the the head has approximately five to six micrometers from the overall length that is something between 50 to 60 micrometers and this is the, the, the mature form called sperm cell or from the Greek spermatozoan so these are spermatozoa the acrosome, as I mentioned, contains enzymes. Right? Uh, the normal uh, semen analysis has its criteria that are that have been changing over time. The figures I will mention are based on the WHO classification from the two. 2010. In the future, when you will be discussing semen analysis, please check the the updates because these uh, these uh, reference values are still evolving. But fi uh, and it's it's much more complex. But few few figures you, you should have on your mind. It's uh, the uh, volume of the ejaculate. That should be over 1.5 milliliters. The pH should be some should range between 7.2 to 8.0. The sperm count. How many sperm cells should be there? So it should be at least 15 millions per milliliter and the total sperm count should be over 38 millions at the motility so the percentage of motile sperms sperm cells should exceed 40% of the total count and the progressive motility should be at least 32 percent so these are sperms that are really uh, really moving in some direction not just hanging around on the same spot morphologically normal shapes should be at least 4% but the viability should be over 58% again these figures might uh, evolve in the future 